Welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephen Nguyen. I'm a pharmacist and I have 52 units of real estate. So I've been kind of reflecting on some of the skills that I developed over time that helped me build my wealth, you know, $6 million net worth, 52 units, did this by 34 years old, while working a full-time W-2 and started off with $250,000 student debt, right? And I come from a middle-class family. You know, I don't come from a golden spoon, right? You know, I came from a, I'm the first generation immigrant Vietnamese American. And, um, you know, my parents didn't do real estate or didn't really know much about money, to be honest, besides to save it. So, um, you know, for me, one skill that I developed over the course of my life and the, the course of my career and my real estate career is the ability to critical think. And, you know, it sounds so basic. It sounds so simple. But I feel like a lot of people lack this skill. Um, a lot of people just want to be told what to do without thinking like, hey, I just listen to what you tell me to do. And they don't think for themselves. They don't try to problem solve for themselves, right? They, they just want things handed on a silver platter, don't have to think, and then basically don't know what to do next if that one thing fails, right? And for me, I've always been very like solution oriented and great at critical thinking where I will think about, okay, how can I solve this problem? I'm gonna try option A. If option A doesn't work, I'm gonna try option B. If option B doesn't work, I'm gonna try option C, D, E, F. Right. And this translates very well to many assets of life, right? Facets of life. It translates well to your W2 job. Like if you're able to problem solve and think creatively and give multiple solutions and pivot if an option doesn't work, you'll probably move to management level, right? That's easy. If you apply it to real estate, like, you know, hey, I'm talking to this owner. Um, I made an offer. He didn't like the offer. Okay, that's plan A. Let's go to plan B. Can I give him a creative finance offer? That's a win win. He didn't like plan B. Let's modify the creative finance offer to make it more favorable in his terms and make it a win-win for me and both explain it, right? And then you keep on going down the list, right? Like most people just try option A, doesn't work and they give up, right? But the reality is if option A doesn't work, how can I tweak option A to make it work so I can present a better option B? And if option B goes down, doesn't work, how can I tweak option B to make a better option C, right? And that's what I mean by critical thinking and, and the ability to, to pivot on the fly, right? And, and a lot of people cannot do that for some reason. It's like a lost art where People don't want to think, you know, maybe their brain is off and they just don't want to use brain energy, right? Like it's not, it's a muscle, right? Like if you don't critically think, then you won't have the skill down the road, right? That That's kind of the knock on, you know, the younger working generation is, is that, you know, they, they, they can't think for themselves, right? And it, it's because it's, it's a muscle that has been used. And if you've been using it since you were 10 years old, uh, by the time you're, you're adult, you have a lot stronger critical thinking muscle versus somebody who hasn't been critically thinking since 10 years old, then they're just where they are, right? Like that, that's, that's the sad reality. And those who are able to critically think, those who are able to pivot are able to move up in the W2 life. They're the ones who are able to do side businesses, you know, buy real estate, build wealth, right? And, you know, it's okay. Like if you choose to have an easier life and, and you're happy and you, you don't care to, you know, build a lot of wealth, then by all means, it's fine, right? But if you do want to, you know, build wealth and, you know, not critically think and hope it's easy, then, you know, it's going to be a, a rude awakening when you try to, to do a side hustle on top of your W-2, right? Like there's a saying, they say, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you, if you half-ass your W-2, you're going to half-ass your side hustle and your side business, right? If you go 100% to your W-2, you're going to go 100% into your um, side hustle your side business, right? Because it, it's the skills, the character traits that you develop, the asset, which is you, that determines the results, right? That's why there's people where no matter what they do, they're successful in everything they do, right? Like, there's a lot of athletes, like Stephen Curry, for example, like, he, he's very dominant in basketball, one of the greatest shooters, and he's really good at golf too, right? Because once he puts his mind on something, he's great at that. And I'm pretty sure, you know, he, he surrounds himself with a lot of great investments, uh, a lot of advisors who can guide him on how to invest. I mean, he provides a nice, you know, a portfolio where he invests in companies and he invests in real estate and, you know, private equity and all the above, right? He's definitely connected. But, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So he he, he puts 110% into his, his basketball craft, which trickles over to golf, which trickles over to business, right? So, you know, it's easy to add the image of, oh, he's he's rich, but he's unhappy, but you can be rich and happy, right? Like there's another alternative, right? It's like, oh, just because you're poor doesn't mean you're happy. There's poor people who are unhappy as well, right? I'd rather be rich and happy versus poor and happy if I had to choose, right? So, you know, that's what people don't realize is like how you do one thing is how you do everything. Like I, I know I see a lot of people who like don't care about like their W-2 job and they're just like, oh, well, 
I'm doing my side business. This is great. And I'm like, well, in my mind, I'm already thinking, well, if you half-ass your W-2 job, you're going to half-ass your business and it's not going to do well, right? Because how you do everything is how, is how you do everything. And you leave a track record, right? So like, if, like for me, you know, I'd say I'm pretty successful in my pharmacy career. And of course, that translates well to building, you know, a real estate portfolio. And then hopefully that translates well to being a real estate broker, right? And hopefully that translates well to being an educator, um, and a coach and mentorship and creating courses and social media platform, right? It, it's all connected, right? And and the key consistent thing is I'm persistent, I'm consistent, and I always slightly improve over time, right? Because a lot of people aren't just willing to show up. Like same with going to the gym. Like honestly, like the difference between someone who's like really jacked and shredded versus someone who has no muscle is are they willing to show up to the gym every day, right? So for me, I haven't been as diligent. So of course I would lose muscle, right? But back then I was very diligent, went four or five times a week. And of course I had muscle, right? So the the difference is just showing up. Are you willing to show up and and put in the work? And um, that's really it. So, you know, it's really how you do everything. One thing is how you do everything. That's the key message. Um, And like you said, like whether you're W2, if you think it's useless or not, there's skills that you're learning from it. Right. Like you work at Starbucks, you're learning customer service, you're learning how to read people, you're learning how to interact with people, you're learning how to make sales. Right. Even if you're like a a janitor mopping the floor. Right. There's a way to make it more efficient. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe you can save some money in one way. Right. Like there's always ways to, to learn from doing something and translate it well to the next thing. Right. So that's what people don't understand. Like I'm taking a lot of the skills I learned as a pharmacist, as a pharmacy leader. And I'm putting that into my real estate business because it translate, right? Like people management translates very well. That's why I love to continue to work because I'm learning more skills, developing myself, which helps my other businesses as I'm working on myself and getting paid. I'm getting paid to learn to then apply that, what I learned to my business, which makes me even more money, right? So, so like where else could you do that in a way? So, um, you know, hopefully this gave you some insight as what it's like to, you know, really develop yourself, really build up a side hustle, Use that critical thinking muscle, you know, start a side hustle, be an entrepreneur and, you know, do that while doing a full-time job, right? It's not easy. It's a grind and there's long nights and there's sometimes you're going to be stressed. Like right now I'm going through a lot of stress and, you know, I have to work out again and be working and working out to relieve that stress, right? So that's a a positive spin on it. And, um, you know, it's not easy and there's some days I question why I'm doing it, but you have to keep on pushing forward. So, you know, hopefully you found some value from this. If you're interested in, Join the mentorship program. Click the link down below. Uh, you can reach out to me for a discount code if you're serious. And please like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much.